news, everyone. Well, not not really good news today. <laughs> well, there is some, but but obviously we're 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 jumping into some just absolutely terrible news. First off, so we'll get into it here in just a second. But um. Yeah, uh, if anybody ever has any news that they would like to drop, uh, make sure you jump into the Discord. There is a specific channel for the Kids News Corner. And uh, if you have something you ever want me to talk about, that is the place to drop it. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and hit up this top story. Um, absolutely devastating news. Uh, Carl Weathers um, passes away at the age of 76. I was talking to a couple people today about it, and yeah, I couldn't remember the age, but... It is actually, actually, actually crazy. Um, so I wanted to see if they have some some information we can kind of read out here. A little bit of, you know, in remembrance. Uh, Carl Weathers, the actor best known as Apollo Creed in the Rocky movies and more recently for his role in the hit Star Wars series, The Mandalorian, died Thursday in his sleep, according to his family. He was 76. We are deeply saddened to announce the passing of Carl Weathers, according to the family statement. Carl was an exceptional human being who lived an extra extraordinary life. Uh, though his contribution to film, television, and the arts and sports, has, uh, he has left an incredible mark and is recognized worldwide and across generations, his family said. He was a beloved uh, brother, father, grandfather, partner, and friend. Um... Oh, yeah, we'll go over a couple of these because you kind of go over a little bit of the background. Um, Weathers got his big uh, screen break in 1976 when he landed his role of uh, Creed and Rocky, uh, according to his bio on IMDb. He continued his role in three other Rocky movies. Weathers also landed parts in 1987's Predator, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Adam Sandler's Happy Gilmore in 1996, and on the small screen in The Mandalorian. Uh, Weathers was also the voice for Combat Carl in Toy Story 4. Oh, shit, I didn't even know that one. Combat Carl. And other, uh, and other shorts in the beloved Pixar f Disney Pixar franchise. He also earned comedy cred by playing a bizarro version of himself in the cult sitcom Arrested Development. Oh, I didn't even know that either. Other TV acting credits include Law & Order, SVU, Magnum P.I., and Chicago P.D. Oh, definitely unexpected. So many of his coworkers had plans with him this week. That is really, really sad. Damn, man. Yo, Vash, what's happening, dude? Yeah, super, super sad. <laughs> what's up, cash? That's what we call him on the side, though. Taint. We call him cash money. Bash cash money. Um. So, yeah, I, I wanted to go over this. The NFL for the Raiders. Yeah, I know. Isn't that crazy? Um, he was in so much stuff. Um, so then, like, there was a couple other ones, a couple other things that people were doing to to go over, um, or that were kind of uh, paying tribute. Um, that I kind of wanted to go over. It. 76 seems young nowadays. It seems very young, which is cr which is crazy. I mean, it actually makes me very happy that life expectancy has gone up. But damn. That's what, that's what I tell people how to pronounce my name. Vash like cash. And then and then he's and then he's like, let me hold five. How y'all doing? I am doing fantastic, man. I got some some nice iced coffee today. I hope you are doing well, man. Um, yeah, it was just crazy because then there was a bunch of people who were kind of going on 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 Twitter and, and you know, Instagrams and things like that. Um, and, uh, you know, kind of uh, paying tributes. Uh, 
Weathers' role as Creed drew eulogies from athletes including, including Magic Johnson and wrestler Austin Creed, who talked about the ways the actor inspired them. Creed posted shots of Apollo's uh, famous red, white, and blue trunks. And when I started wrestling in 2004, I had no idea what or who I wanted to be. It wasn't long before my favorite character, Apollo Creed, became my inspiration. For the past 20 years, I've drawn on Carl Weathers for that inspiration, and I just wanted to say thank you. Rest well. Um, so, and then there was, uh... Uh, just, this just says Johnson, who starred Johnson, who starred for the Los Angeles Lakers during Oh, Magic Johnson. Um, hey, no problem, Fissy. Thank you so much. Of course, of course, of course. I appreciate the appreciate the raid. Uh, so they're talking about Magic Johnson, who starred for the Los Angeles Lakers during Weather's 1980s uh, heyday. Added rest in peace. Uh, to the truly amazing actor and entertainer, Carl Weathers. We all marveled at his talents on the big screen in the Rocky franchise uh, as Apollo Creed. And I'm really going to, I really enjoyed him in his role as the police chief in the hit TV show, In the Heat of the Night. Cookie and I pray for the Weathers family during this difficult time. Um... You talk about that he had a uh, career with the Oakland Raiders before moving into fully act or fully moving into acting. Um, he also had a couple other people who were playing paying tribute. Uh, I won't go through everybody's, but it's it's pretty cool to see just everybody kind of pouring, you know, a lot of love and stuff for Carl. I felt like I felt like he's definitely getting a little older, but man still looks really good. So I cannot uh, I cannot be, you know. Uh, I, I was gonna, I was gonna, I was trying to think of what I was gonna say. I, I always, I kind of wish to hope, uh, at some point that I can get to uh, age as gracefully as some other people get to. So, yeah, he was such a fixture. Yeah, he was, he's really one of those guys, um, which is is very, uh, very sad. So, um, so I think that's the only sad news. I, I think. Don't quote me on this, but, um, so, uh, the other day, the other D, uh, the other day, there was a documentary that came out for the making of Last of Us Part 2, um, where there was some, some conversations with Neil Druckmann, and he dropped a little bit of a tidbit, uh, teasing that he believes there might be something for The Last of Us Part 3. Yo, show, show, what's happening? Uh, he was killing it in The Mandalorian. He was really going hard. A little tidbit, just a wee one. Yeah, so I was kind of going back and forth with title about this plenty as well. Is this guy is like breaking Neil Druckmann, officially happening, officially confirms it's going to happen. That's not what he did. He is saying he very much clearly states that he has a concept that he is working on. And right now they're kind of feeling good, like that there's something that they can say. Um, we'll watch the clip real quick and then we'll kind of get into it a little more. So this is the clip from that, from that documentary. I didn't want to prioritize the story, so that story was shelved. And I still believe one day it will see the light of day. I don't know if it's, it'll be a game or a show, TBD. First game had such a clean concept of like the unconditional love a parent feels for their child. The second one, once we landed on this idea of the pursuit of justice at any cost. Justice for the ones you love, it felt like, oh, there's a clean concept here, and there's a through line from the first game about love. If we never get to do it again, this is a fine ending point. And right, last bite of the apple, the story's done. The great thing about working at Naughty Dog is that we don't have to. Um, it's always like, we would love another Last of Us, but if you guys feel like we're passionate about something else, we'll support this other thing. Very privileged position to be in. I, I, I never take that for granted. I've been just thinking about, okay, is there a concept there? And for now years, I haven't been able to find that concept. Uh, but recently that's changed. And um, I don't have a story, but I do have that concept that to me is as exciting as one, as exciting as two, um, is its own thing and yet has this through line for all three. Uh, so. It, 
it does feel like there's probably one more chapter to the story. All right, sorry. So that's pretty abrupt cutoff, but so his point is that he has a concept right now and people are taking it as Last of Us Part 3 happening. Um, and that is not what he's saying. He's saying that he is he's he's felt like he's found the right the right concept for the third game, but he definitely doesn't know that it's gonna come into anything at this point, uh, or that it's gonna or actually evolve into anything as, at this point too. Um, yeah. he yeah, like even before that even title, because he's saying that he doesn't even have a uh, like he doesn't even have a story at this point. Um, and he even said, like, if this is the end of it, it's a great ending, which means he doesn't even know that this is actually going to ha going to be able to happen. It sounds like that that he wants to, but not sure. So I will say people are, are pretty much saying that they, uh, you know, people were like, it's happening. It's happening. And I want to just point out and I know this hurts. There was a Last of Us multiplayer game that was happening until it wasn't. And I know that that hurts for people, but that is how this goes. Games are not out until until they're out. So let's let's just let's just chill for a little bit here, guys. We're enjoying that there could be a third Last of Us game. Ah, uh, Sony won't let it end. Well, I I saw that yeah that 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 Ron is is being a little slanderous, but whatever. <laughs> Uh, Ron, we also found out Ron is very, very much, uh, the guy who is, uh, he hates everything until it's something that he likes. And then he's like, no, no, this is a great idea and show form or something else. Yeah. I agree with that. I'm also kind of was thinking about this earlier too. Um, so they're going to do like the, the show and everything, and then they're going to get caught up with where the games are at are they just like okay the show's done for right now or are they gonna be like no we need to do something else and are we gonna get show before we get game or something like that like it's gonna be kind of interesting when they everything kind of catches up to end beautifully then drag on bro it's barely is it's barely many games here man <laughs> do you know how two ends yeah that's true ron do you even know um uh, pretty that many times that's true I, I understand it, man. <laughs> Do you want me to break out spoilers? It wouldn't be Ron if it wasn't. <laughs> Yay. Yo, thank you so much. <laughs> Got final was such a dismal disappointment. Yeah, but not everything is that, bro. Not everything is that. Not everything, not everything sucks when it, when it ends, man. Oh. Say Last of Us didn't, be, maybe it didn't end beautifully just yet. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I agree. With... Oh, really? What, what was it? What was the... Really? What did he... What did you say? I'm sorry. I, I was looking to see. <laughs> Gonna Game of Thrones it. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, well... Sorry. Secondary out content outpaces the original. Listen, I I think I even said like, like Naughty Dog, yes. Like I think Taint was saying something like, well, you know, Sony's not gonna let it end. But I think that that's not all also necessarily true. Like Sony would if, if, if Naughty Dog really pushed up against it. I think Naughty Dog wouldn't come back to this game or this series if, if they didn't believe that there was actually something there to do, you know? That's why I, 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 I trust them at right at this point. They haven't led me astray at this point, you know. The 
they were at a loss for time when HBO finally decided it. And so the came, story came out in a, a rush job. Yeah, but you don't expect that that's what's going to happen with Naughty Dog, though, Ron. Have you had, have you seen that ever happen with, with any other Naughty Dog game, man? Because I don't think you have. Jeez. Series will end. Yeah, it will. Whenever it's ready to. Either it's this time or it's or it's you know after the next game or whatever. It'll end when it needs to. Pushing the multiplayer game. Naughty Dog didn't want to do it. That's sad though. That the multiplayer would have been great. And a great finale. And how many games did they make of Uncharted, man? That's right. Man, there's only been two Last of Us games, my bro. Like, if they decide they want to make a third, like, I mean, let, it, let, 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 them, let, them, let them cook, bro. They've obviously, like you said, had a great run and a great finale at four games. And they're only at two on this one, and they might do a third. Rockstar gave up on RDR2. Yeah, only because the, I think that they're putting all their time into... Into... Uh, into Grand Theft Auto, right? Fine, bring Joel back as a clone. That's that's not what they're saying, bro. The game doesn't have. God damn it, Ron! <laughs> you're you're missing you're missing everything, man. <laughs> you're just trying to be <laughs> you're just trying to be a dick at this point. God um, damn it, Ron! Uh, <laughs> where's Cyclo? Cyclo, I need you to take care of Ron, man. <laughs> You know, you, you all ever seen Old Yeller? <laughs> you all ever read Old Yeller? <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I was gonna say, damn. I this this whole this whole uh, article was just more of about that whole uh, everything we just talked about. I'm not really gonna go through it too much. I don't think there was much more here um, outside of just. Uh, every, every kind of just talking about what what Neil Neil was talking about in the other interview, um, but if you do want to read it, it's over in the Discord. If you uh, if you would like to read it, <laughs> you heard the man. I'm trying to go to the farm upstate. That's right. <laughs> uh, all right. So this next one, uh, Catherine O'Hara is going to be going ahead and also joining the HBO's Last of Us season two in a secret role um i was asking plenty in the discord as well what do you think that she who do you think she's gonna be and plenty had some in, an interesting an interesting thought um hbo has confirmed that schitt's creek star Catherine o'hara uh, is joining the highly anticipated second season of the last of us in an undisclosed role uh, the network made the announcement on Friday, although the news had somewhat broken earlier this week. O'Hare appeared on uh, Watch What Happens Live to promote her film Argyle on Thursday, during which a fan asked if there was any truth to rumor that she would be in The Last of Us Part 2. She respond, uh, responded that she was, in fact, in talks to join the series after marveling, how do you know these things? <laughs> um, and then they go over some of the casting and everything. Uh, just so you know, Ron... Uh, Ellie's mom was already played, you son of a gun. When the apocalypse, yeah, but they already they already cast her mom. Her mom. Are you are you pulling my leg, bro? be screaming ellie oh wow yeah thank you so much for coming in and hanging out um jenna always appreciate seeing you zombies Uh, 
Yeah, I'm just saying though, Ron, for real, man. <laughs> Buddy. Uh they literally cast Ellie's Ellie's mom in the show. It was it was literally the the girl who plays Ellie. Uh it was in last it was in the last season, dude. What you talking about, bruv? Sorry. Um I'm here for you, my friend. Wait, what? Hey, Casper, what's happening, buddy? How you doing, man? Didn't watch the series. Well, maybe you should before you start talking out your butt. Um, but uh, Plenty had said something to the effect of, what if she plays the prophet? Which I thought was an interesting concept because if you've seen any of the playthrough of The Last of Us that I've been doing, or you played through the game yourself, um, the prophet is dead. Obviously, they can do some flashbacks or or that would be it'd be kind of an interesting move if they did make her alive because she's kind of a martyr. So I'm kind of interested to see. Yeah, yeah, I'm, that's what I'm thinking too. plenty is flashbacks. But I would want to see her in more. I wanted to I wanted to do more. Did they ever did they ever did they ever cast Tommy's wife? My, 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 that was my only other thought. It's really good, Ron. You wouldn't know if you didn't watch it. Maria has been cast. All right, well, yeah, I couldn't remember. I, I, I was pretty sure I remembered or that I, that she was there, but I couldn't, I was like, maybe I, maybe this picture is really just tricking me too, that she really looks like the game version. <laughs> um, all right, let's, uh, yeah, let's keep on rolling now. Uh, apparently there is a report of 95% of studios are working on or aim to release a live service game. I'm pretty sure this was from Tidal and uh, already just, ew. I've also just only kind of realized what live service games were. I didn't know that they were specifically. is pretty solid right yo johnny was happening yeah so you got the you got the gifted sub from um my girlfriend's sister so <laughs> gotta go my dudes hey ron thank you so much for coming and hanging out bro i will see you around love you dude about jungle animals hey that sounds amazing have a great time johnny thank you so much for coming by yeah, Johnny, Johnny, we play a lot of Johnny Bailey uh, music over here. And uh, Johnny has also made the music for uh, the Kids News Corner. So make sure you check him out. <laughs> it was fun, bro. It was definitely something. Uh, the voice actors of Joel and Ellie are on the show. Yeah, that's what we were talking about, as well as <laughs> Tommy. Yeah, well, Ron likes to just give us a hard time, Casper. Uh, okay, so these live service games, I didn't really completely understand what a live service game was until I saw what was going on with this Suicide Squad game. That was kind of what uh, what was kind of triggering me. So if you guys haven't seen the Suicide, Kill the Justice League Suicide Squad game, I don't know what the fuck the game was exactly called. It does not look great. I mean, the game just doesn't look very good. And they they really did some 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 dirty things to uh kevin conroy's batman um <laughs> all that being aside uh you can essentially play through the 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 uh the whole campaign get to the end and then as you're getting close to the end i should say there's like a hey gotcha <laughs> so you can you can you can get an ending in the game and then they're like but know that there's gonna be seasons so live service technically is like a like an ongoing series of of game you know that'll come out kind of like a uh, like a Fortnite kind of thing and so like seasons is like the the idea that i always think of is like they add something new every season and you're you're working on something every season the new trend i fucking hate it because the problem i mean in the the, the uh, suicide squad game like perfectly showed off why it's a bad idea because they had day one 
or they had uh early access like a couple of days of early access if you paid a couple of uh, paid some extra money and their service was not working correctly or they had a bug or whatever we talked about the other day and people just couldn't get to the game they couldn't play it because you because they had to take the servers down and because it's a live service game there's no servers you can't play the fucking game and it makes no sense Uh, that's what last of us multiplayer was gonna be yeah and and listen as a multiplayer game i kind of get being a live service thing because that's not like that's not like a single player game thing i slightly get like the multiplayers being like a live service thing like i said like a Fortnite kind of thing i get it but but having like a single player game not have an offline mode is absolutely crazy to me <laughs> uh all right sorry a, a new report from griffin gaming partner says that 95 percent of game makers are developing or maintaining a live service game the 2023 game development report made in partnership with uh rendered oh my god sorry the the this looks real goofy on my thing rendered vc surveyed 537 studios from across the globe among the surveyors 66 uh percent agreed that live service are necessary for long-term title success should have been more like guardians of the galaxy yeah i think a lot of people thought that i've seen like so many articles that said like uh the suicide squad squad game should have been more fun <laughs> like, oh, damn um the survey divines a live service as any regular updates uh cadence planned for a game the report notes that traditional games development is two three years long while live production is more like five years multi-year game development uh forms production processes and pipelines that are intended to deliver a few key milestones in what is essentially a waterfall process production in live service however is a constant state of planning and adjusting game parameters to enhance players experience while designing and deploying new features to add new player value says the survey additionally the report added that live service turn uh, teams want faster content releases across the industry live service teams reported their ideal production schedules as weekly to bi-weekly for live ops cadence and bi-weekly uh, bi to monthly for game content updates in the context of game development which typically spans multiple years live service production schedules are moving at a breakneck speed Ugh. bring this back down game devs take so long it does but that's okay i'm okay with game development taking a long time as long as the game is worth it and in some cases uh games take four five six years and uh they're trash and that's not good either <laughs> so um i'm okay with game development taking time take the time that you need to make a good game but don't put out some shit about how uh, it needs to be a live s service shit that God, it just I'll be old by the time it gets out. Yes, but that's OK. I don't want to get old. Well, yeah, <laughs> I'm too young for old. Ooh, man. Yeah, well, I hate to break this too plenty. It's going to happen. <laughs> They got two more biomes. Oh, before they're done, really? I think it just prints money. Yeah. Yeah, they definitely think it does. Which, I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't do good for money, you know, for like a, a dev and stuff. But come on. They, they have to know how much work goes into that. Uh... <laughs> Cause that's what I do out here playing. You know, listen, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta make sure people keep it real. I gotta make sure people are, 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 are understanding things, you know? Come on, man. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, listen, whenever you get your game out, plenty, that's when it's ready. You know, I'm okay with that. 
but yeah all these people who think that they got to do a live service game or that that that's but like that's what they're gonna do to that's gonna bring them all this money it's not it's not it's i think i'd be interested to see how this suicide squad game goes because this is kind of the one that's gonna get a lot of attention because of all the delays and everything that happened with it and a lot of the issues and then it being a live service game i'll be interested to see how it goes long term and with how their live service goes because i think they have quite a bit of of content lined up i'd be interested um let's keep on going uh exclusive my microsoft plans starfield launch for playstation 5 um all right let's get back in here again uh for many weeks now rumors have persisted regarding my microsoft's intent to excuse me uh microsoft's intent to release a number of first party games namely hi-fi rush and sea of thieves on rival platforms according to other our sources who have asked to remain anonymous because they were not authorized to talk about company plans the list of games also includes bethesda's studios uh starfield which uh listen if bethesda wants to keep that game like we'll, we'll, we, we can trade for like a different game you know like is there like a like a trade game we can do here you know this is kind of old with spill fencers sp spill phil spencer's recent tweet how recent if they remaster oblivion i'm in right can we switch for oblivion they can keep Starfield. That's what I'm saying. Can we can we do a little switcheroo here? <laughs> uh, last day or two. Is that the uh, that's the one that's after this though, right? Because I was kind of just going in order of how the information usually comes out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Title I always just so unfortunately, yeah, we always kind of get the news as I always re I I try to as best I can at least try to read the news in the way that it came out. So that way we all kind of get the context and then we can kind of, uh, sorry, sorry. Now it looks as though Microsoft are planning on bringing Bethesda's new RPG universe to an entirely new platform, PlayStation 5. Uh, there has been no, there wasn't like much, uh, that was confirmed about this, but it does sound like, uh, Microsoft is going to be sharing some details, um, in the next week about what's going on here uh, microsoft plans to share details about its plans to bring hi-fi rush and other xbox exclusive to playstation 5 and nintendo switch consoles according to sources familiar with microsoft plans um specifically phil spencer said we're listening and we hear you we've been planning a business update event for next week where we look forward to sharing more details with you about our vision for the future of xbox stay tuned um uh, yeah so they added it to this one right so there is a lot of talk about what they're going to do whether it's going to be more on the distributing end or whatever but we did talk about it in the discord a little bit and i do want to make sure that i just talk about it here um there are rumors kind of swirling just about all everything right now because of all this that microsoft could be abandoning the xbox at some point now there's no there's no evidence for this right now um we're obviously just kind of waiting and seeing but i know like it sounds like a lot of it's pretty ludicrous i don't i don't think that they will but i also wouldn't be surprised i don't know what the xbox makes for them um because a lot of the times a lot of these companies will sell uh you know a console at a loss knowing that they'll make up the money on the games or you know things like that so I don't know where Microsoft's and Xbox kind of where that's all that. And, and maybe they're just kind of looking at it as like, why, why keep on playing this game? If we're, if we're not, if we don't really feel like we're in it and then just instead go and become a distributor of games, you know, they've bought up these, these big companies and then they can distribute them you know these games from these companies and stuff like that and and make services like the game pass and stuff where you know i feel like they're gonna make good money on something like that where you don't you can just have the service that provides the games stuff like that i wouldn't be surprised again no no real you know talk about that being a real thing right now just something that's kind of floating out in the ether
Hmm. Um. Oh, I see plenty through this other one in here too. We'll grab that one in just a minute. Plenty. Sorry. Yeah, I thought about adding that one too. Plenty. I seriously did. I was like, ooh. And then I didn't really want to talk about her. I'll add it at the end though. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty interesting stuff though. I, um, whenever we get uh, an update on this stuff, we will, we'll talk, we'll definitely be talking about it over here though. Um, <sighs> as if a million Xbox fanboys screamed out in terror and then suddenly silence. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. She's something. Yeah. All right. Let's let's get through some of the other ones before we talk about her. Uh, new Alan Wake feature makes the game more accessible to non-horror fans. I was reading this and I just thought, actually, this is kind of great because it actually makes it not just more uh, accessible to non-horror fans, but people who are also a lot more um, sensitive to flashing lights and things like that. Uh, it's a long-standing uh, horror tradition to unsettle the audience by using flash jump scares, terrifying images, or short clips that break up the action on screen, only to disappear as quickly as they came. It was the way to troll people online in the mid-20s or 2000s, uh, play a regular video, and then cut to a disturbing image with a scream over it that would blow out your eardrums. Alan Wake 2 uses them in spades, overlaying terrifying close-up of Mr. Scratch with loud music stings. I found them effective, but they're not for everybody. Thankfully, in a recent Alan 2 Wake or Alan Wake 2 update, the develop, uh, developers have added a feature that allows players to tune these horror flash uh, flashes. The adjustments aren't robust, but they can now choose between low and normal visual and audio intensity. Uh, I tested the new feature out, putting both visual and audio on low, and thanks to thanks to a added chapter select feature also included in this update, I was able to jump into an area I knew had a big jump scare, specifically one that even got me. I booted up the Saga chapter, headed to the place, uh, <laughs> and uh, got into the jump scare. Uh, the new setting doesn't remove this reveal entirely, but it's slow. It slows it down, removes a lot of the flashing lights, and lowers the volume to uh, of the music quite a bit. So I just wanted to kind of mostly bring this up because I always really, really appreciate more accessibility kind of things, even if it is just an accessibility of people who don't want to be jump scared all the fucking time. If you want to play a game, but still don't want to, and want to enjoy some of it, but also don't want to be like getting slapped around with like, Five Nights at Freddy's fucking jump scare shit. So I thought this was pretty cool. And like I said, it sounds like some, some of it was like flashing lights. I, I've seen a little bit of Alan Wake. I know that there's some intense light things. So maybe that could also be kind of a helpful thing as well. I think it's pretty cool. And I wanted to bring it up. <sighs> also, you guys ever seen, you guys see anything about Elmo this last week? <laughs> uh... Because uh, I saw some things about Elmo. And uh, yeah, Elmo not having a good week. Poor Elmo. Yeah, there was some pretty intense stuff going on. I mean, let's get into it real quick, but uh, never clicked on it. All right. Well, you're about to, you're about to find out, bro. <laughs> Was not prepared. Yes, but also something else plenty. There's There was something later on that happened that is actually kind of sad. Uh, I really hope Elmo and, and whoever else manages the social media account for Sesame Street gets a vacation. In the course of a week, the poor puppet became the vessel for the internet's collective trauma dump event session uh, and was attacked live on today by Seinfeld creator Larry da uh, David and then further, cri further criticized by David after the re renowned comedian said he would do it again if given the chance. So not only did he get all that, but then he also got uh, assaulted by Larry David, who made some kind of goofy fucking comments afterwards that I, I wasn't super a fan of. Um, so Elmo asks a question on his Twitter account that says, Elmo is checking in. How is everybody doing? This obviously uh, led to a lot of people uh, 
replying uh, with a lot of uh, the issues that are going on in their lives lately. At the time of publication, the original tweet has over 18,000 replies and was re retweeted over 58,000 times, many of which focus on horrible people and how horrible people are doing in general right now. Uh. <laughs> A representative uh, tweet put it succinctly as Elmo, we are tired. But many other responses were even bleaker than that. As one said, every morning, I cannot wait to go back to sleep. Every Monday, I cannot wait for Friday to come. Elmo re replies and even retweets essentially became a dumping ground for everyone's sad feelings on the internet. Uh, he then kind of tweets out that he says, Wow, Elmo is glad he asked. Elmo learned that it is important to ask friends how they are doing. Elmo will check in again soon. Friends, Elmo loves you. Hashtag emotional well-being. Pretty, pretty decent, you know, little, little message they came, you know, comes up here. Uh, the tweet ended up being so big that NBC talk show today invited Elmo to be a guest. On, uh, and on Thursday, he made an appearance alongside his dad, Louis. Uh, the same day as Seinfeld creator Larry David guested on the show. In my opinion, Elmo did a great job of talking about the importance of mental health, but that didn't protect him from what was to come. After talking to the audience about the tweet, David got up from behind the camera and attacked Elmo with seemingly no... Uh, provocation on live national television then david <laughs> then david uh shook the puppet by its throat and later yelled off camera somebody had to do it <sighs> so he you know so elmo elmo is on there talking about like a lot of you know, like mental health things. And then, you know, Larry David like comes up and tags him and says, ah, somebody had to do it. So whatever. Uh, yeah, I'm not super happy about that, but it gets worse. <laughs> David issued a reluctant apology to Elmo on today, but then seemingly took it back in a conversation on late night with Seth Meyers saying he was going on about mental health and I had to listen to every word. And, and I was going on, I was going, oh my God, oh my God, I don't think I could take another second of this, David said, while mimicking the voice of Elmo. I couldn't take it, and you know what? I, I would do it again. Yeah, so Larry David essentially was like, oh, this guy is talking about all these, all like, you know, people kind of, you know, need, maybe needing some like, uh, mental well-being mental health kind of stuff and he was like oh yeah this is the time i need to be like oh my god i can't believe he's just going on and on and on was it a skit i don't think it was a skit um i think it's just larry david being larry david so i wanted to talk about it because it was such a big thing that came up this last week and uh then i didn't even see the larry david stuff until i read this and i was i was just shocked I like Larry David a lot for like Seinfeld and stuff, but kind of a dick move. <sighs> kind of a dick move. Um, sorry, I'm gonna, we get we got just a couple more, and I wanna I wanna I wanna run through these bad boys. Um, so yeah. Larry David being Larry David. Uh, Son of the Hedgehog 3 is adding Kristen Ritter, uh, Cristo Fernandez, and Alaya, Alayla, Alayla Brown, and more. So, if you guys haven't heard, uh, there's going to be a third Sonic movie. I didn't, I didn't know that there was going to be a third one. Maybe it just got announced. I don't really know, but they're kind of casting up, and I wanted to go over some of the casting and stuff. Um, I know they did two of these movies. I, I do know that they did two. I never saw the second one. I saw the first one. Not bad. I should go around and see the first one, but or see the second one. Didn't know there was a second one. Yeah, I only knew there was a second one because they did. Um, Idris Elba was in it. He played Knuckles, which was kind of interesting. 
Uh, following the news that Jim Carrey will return as Dr. Robotnik, which is pretty awesome. Sonic the Hedgehog 3 will also see the addition of Kristen Ritter, uh, Layla Brown, uh, John Wolk, Sophia uh, Pernas, Cristo Fernandez, and Jorma Tacon. Tacon, I think. I don't know. I apologize for anybody's name that I did mess up. Uh, they know there's going to be a bunch of returning people as well. Uh, da, 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 and then, oh God, I don't, I don't like this rogue the bat picture here. Oh, there's apparently she's they're They're talking that she might be uh rogue the bat. No, that's not great. Kristen Ritter. Sorry. Um, but so I guess they're I guess they're adding uh who's who's the who's the 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 moody uh emo sonic does anybody know his name first I've heard of a third I uh, yeah I felt like it was mine as well I didn't know that they were doing a third but then I thought like I don't remember them announcing a third so maybe they did shadow is it shadow for some reason I was thinking shadow but then I was like I don't think that's it <laughs> it does sound very moody though oh yeah so shadow is gonna be in the third one so so yeah I just think this is pretty cool I would like to I'd like to only watch these because Jim Carrey he was great in the first one. I would like to see what he does in the second and then maybe, uh, you know, I'd check the third one out just for that. So we will see. All right, next. Open World Factory Sim Satisfactory it will launch. It's uh, will finally launch version 1.0 this year. This is awesome. I fucking love Satisfactory. I when this game got announced and they went into uh, early access, I immediately was like, I'm in. I've had the game since it was first first came out. Um, but yeah, they're gonna finally go, they're gonna finally do a 1.0 version this year, which is super, super cool. Uh, Coffee, Stains, Coffee Stain Studios, which is obviously just a fantastic studio name, will finally launch Satisfactory 1.0 later this year. It is announced in an update video. Studio community manager Snoot Trep Trepto laid out the 1.0 plans along with a definitely not fake roadmap filled with guns, fast cars, and romanceable creatures. There no, there's no release date uh, yet, but the team is confident that there will be no more early access updates for players to wait through before the full factory building experience becomes available. Uh, as for what Satisfactory 1.0 looks like, Coffee Stain says players can expect new content, fixes for long lasting issues, and end game and narrative, and, and end game and narrative, uh, and more. As uh, these final features are ironed out, Treplo says there will, uh, oh, he says that there will be next to no patches for the game until the full release. So, yeah, I actually really like this game. I just thought this was really cool. If you haven't checked it out, you should check it out. It's actually very good. Um, it's one of those ones that you just, you you mine like iron, and then you figure out how to turn that iron into iron bars. And then you get a machine that can that can mine the iron, and then that, that machine can pass it off to another iron, or another machine that can turn it into bars. And then you figure out how to make those bars into something else, and then you have a machine pass that into that machine, and it's just, it's one of those ones that you just keep on, like, figure out how to do something, build a machine to do it for you, and like, that kind of stuff. And it is, it is satisfying. Um, let's go over these two and then we'll, we'll, we'll finish off on the, uh, on the, uh, the video. Uh, so IGN has, uh, the IGN staff votes to uh, unionize with the news guild CWA. <laughs> this is pretty interesting. I get a lot of news for here for, from IGN. I mean, I, I try and pull a couple of different sources, but <laughs> some might call it satisfactory. Dang, look at you. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see this. 
Uh, employees at IGN, the popular video game and entertainment media site, have announced that they are unionizing with the News Guild CWA labor union. The IGN Creators Guild consists of editorial and creative workers at IGN, which is owned by digital media parent company Ziff David. Davis. Oh, sorry, Ziff Davis. Uh, the guild is currently made up of over 80 employees with 87% of the edu- eligible members signing union uh, authorization cards. The union will be fighting for better pay, layoff protection, measurable steps that increase uh, staff diversity, and more. So I think this is pretty cool. I like I like more and more of these companies being able to do this, and this is just not one that I was expecting. Um, this was dropped in here by uh, title as well. Very, very, very cool. Um, yeah, I don't think it's gonna, I don't think it's gonna affect anything much, but I think it's very cool nonetheless. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm gonna throw this one in here. This is the one that Plenty found. Uh, so I don't know if you guys know Gina Carano. Uh, she was on The Mandalorian for a season, and then she got fired. Yeah, I saw this as well. And then I was like, I don't know if I want to talk about her, but plenty threw it in there. And I feel like we should definitely talk about it. She was, oh, two seasons. Oh, I didn't know it was two. Yeah. Oh, that's true. She was in the second season. Uh, so she is, got, got let go. And then, uh, she's going to go ahead and try and sue Disney over the firing. Um, and her lawsuit lawsuit is going to be funded by Elon Musk. Um, all right. Well, uh, it'll make more sense in just a second. In an escalation of a standoff over her firing from The Mandalorian, uh, Gina Carano is suing Disney and Lucasfilms for discrimination and wrongful termination in a lawsuit that opens up, opens another front in the battlefield for influence over Hollywood that has drawn in corporate America. <laughs> Uh, Carano is in a complaint filed Tuesday in California federal court alleges she was fired for voicing right wing opinions on social media and seeks a court order that would force uh, Lucas film to recast her. Elon Musk made good on a promise to foot the legal bill for users who claim that they have been discriminated against due to their activity on his platform is helping fund the suit through X slash Twitter. So that's why it's being funded by Elon is because apparently he said that he would foot the bill for people who are getting discriminated against. Uh, I'm going to refer to it as Twitter. Keep going. So that way, if you see it, just no. In a statement, uh, Twitter's head of business operation, Joe, said as a sign of Twitter's corpse commitment to free speech. We're proud to provide financial support to Gina Carano's uh, lawsuit, empowering her to seek vindication of her free speech rights on Twitter and the ability to work without bully harassment or discrimination. Lucasfilm in 2021 announced that Carano would be, would not be returning to the hit series after sharing a post in which she said, most people today don't realize that to get to the point where, Nazi soldiers could easily round up thousands of Jews. The government first made their own neighborhood hate them simply for being Jews. How is this any different from hating somebody, <laughs> some <laughs> hating someone for their political views? Wow, what a what a what a statement! And she got let go because of this, and she's shocked she got let go because of it. Oh, it was the it was the latest in a long string of posts in which the uh, former MMA fighter drew the ire of social media users for positions seen as right winged on hot button issues. Corona, who dropped uh, the UTA following the controversy, dropped by UTA following the controversy, previously mocked government mandates to wear masks during COVID-19 pandemic and falsely suggested that voter fraud occurred (laughs) during the 2020 presidential election. (sighs) 
In a statement clarifying the post on Twitter, Carano on Tuesday said, my words were consistently twisted and demonized and dehumanized, eh, dehumanizing me as an alt-right wing extremist. So obviously, yes, it is very political, but it just is weird that she thinks that I, I, here's the thing. She just is making a lot of, a lot of, she's saying a lot of things, whether you agree with her or not. That's not the point of this. It's that she's kind of feeling like she got discriminated against because she made statements. But I feel like Disney and Lucasfilm technically has that right. Um, if people are kind of, I, I, it would be like the same thing. So, all right, this is going to be kind of a strange, strange connection. So think about like the Jonathan Major stuff. He was kind of going through a legal battle where he, uh, he was having some, uh, some domestic violence issues. Once he was kind of found, uh, that that was true. Disney dropped him. I feel like if Disney, you know, any company decides like, hey, you've broken whatever moral guideline that we have, like, I mean, they kind of get to choose that. Like, that's part of working in Hollywood. I don't know. Maybe there's something's going to come out of this. I don't know. I don't really know. She's just kind of a wild lady. <laughs> and I just, I don't know. Maybe something will happen. There's just a lot going on here. And the funded by Elon Musk part, just kind of kind of the icing on the cake. So again, whatever you guys want to, you know, you know, whether you agree, disagree, whatever, that's not a big deal to me. I don't really care, whatever. Just just kind of interesting to see that she's going to try this. And it'll be interesting to see what the outcome actually ends up coming out to be. So, you know. Can you tell I don't want to talk about this anymore? <laughs> uh, for the free choice, those decisions create. Not not a bad way of putting it, right? Um, all right, guys, let's let's get into this last this last uh, thing. Um, so this is uh this was a it's a an early access. Um, release date trailer for a game called Nightingale. And uh, I think this one was dropped in here by title uh, as well. I don't know what it is. I didn't check this out at all. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that plenty. Yeah, I, I'm just interested to see what uh, we'll, we'll we'll keep an eye on what the re, what the results of that be. You know, uh, it's a survival game, right? So I don't know much. I just don't know much about it. But title was like, hey, you guys like survival games? Let's check it out. So I agree. Let's check it out. I know I saw this is only like 30 seconds long too. So let's check it out. Realm Walker, your path forward is winding and full of terrors. Save yourself, survive the realms, and rebuild all that has been lost. Oh, okay. Actually, this looks pretty weird. I'm gonna have to take a look at a, a at a longer one for these at some point. Yeah, a shorter one. I appreciate that, man. Uh, there are portals to various realms. Yeah, and some of those realms look like they had like big monsters kind of things. I don't know. It looks really cool. I'm gonna take a look at at, at uh, another a bigger trailer off stream at some point. But uh, yo, very cool. So early access on February 20th. Um, very cool. We'll have to keep an eye on it. Thank you so much for for throwing this one in there, man. Very very cool. And uh, with that, that's going to go ahead and wrap it up for the news. Uh, we will hang out for a little bit before we get into some Last of Us. Um, but that'll go ahead and do it. Thank you guys so much for coming out. And I will see y'all on the other side.